with at least four different ways of opening images from Lightroom Classic into Photoshop. A lot of people are confused about which method they should use. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna demystify all of that and I'm gonna show you the best way to work with Lightroom Classic and Photoshop together. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and I've got another episode for you right now where we're going to look at working with Photoshop and Lightroom Classic together. There's a lot of different things we can do as far as adjustments, but there's also a ton of flexibility in here that a lot of people are not aware of. So I'm going to demystify it and show you all the workflows right now. So here we are in Lightroom Classic and I have a photograph of a car. Now I want to open this inside of Photoshop. Now this is a raw file you can see here. There's the shot right there and uh, and we can see ARW. So that's a Sony raw file shot on an A7S III. Okay so what we want to do is you're going to right click and when you take the original raw or JPEG or any photograph the first time you open it in Photoshop you don't want to choose edit in Photoshop. Not yet. We want to go down to open as a smart object in Photoshop. So let's do that right now. And here we are, we're inside of Photoshop and we have our image of the car. It looks exactly the same, but notice because we opened it as a smart object, now we have the smart object icon. Now the value of this is the ability to double click and this is going to take us into camera raw. Now, if we look here in camera raw, notice all these adjustments. These are not zeroed out. There's already adjustments here. If we go back to Lightroom and we go to the develop module, we can see those are the settings. So essentially when you open it as a smart object inside of Photoshop, not only does it keep it as that raw file, it also maintains any of the settings that you've made inside of Lightroom. Let me demonstrate. So say so I change something just so we can see. So I'm going to warm this up a little bit. Okay, so let's do this again. We're going to right click. We're going to choose edit in Photoshop. Nope. We're going to do smart object. And here we are. We've got our smart object. Let's double click. Notice that that temperature that we increased is also increased in here. And if I want to put it back, I can just simply put it back here and click. Okay. Now we've made an adjustment. But let's go a little bit further. But before I do, let's see what's happening in Lightroom. If we go to Lightroom here, notice that it hasn't updated, it hasn't changed yet. So what happens is when we go to Photoshop, if we save this, if we choose File Save or Control Command S, we're going to save this file. Notice I didn't choose Save As, I didn't choose a location for it, I just saved it. And that's because the Lightroom will pick this up automatically. Now here we are in Lightroom Classic, and you can see where the photo was. Let's go back to my library, and I'll just hit the G key just to go into the grid view. Notice it now shows two, so it's created a stack. And we can see there's two images here in the stack. If we choose this first image, we can see it's now a TIFF. Let's click the second image. Ah, this is our original RAW file. This is the file we've always been working with. But when you save it from Photoshop, it now creates another copy, which is a TIFF. So this now enables me to do things like layers and different things inside of Photoshop. Notice that the appearance is updated. Okay, let's go back. Here we are in Photoshop. And why don't we do some adjustments? Let's apply a curves adjustment layer. And with this curves adjustment layer, let's just do some color work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the reds in the shadows. And why don't we boost the blues a little bit in the shadows. So let's boost those blues, but not in the highlights, just in the shadows. So we're essentially creating a, a split tone kind of an effect. All right, let's save this control S and we're going to close it. Let's go back to Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Here's our original. It's unchanged. Of course, we can go back to our develop module. We can, you know, reset that color if we want anytime. And here's the copy. All right, so this is where things are going to change. 
So if you're just working in Lightroom, you've made your adjustments, and then you're gonna go into Photoshop to finish the work, what you're gonna do is just open it as a smart object, do that work, and then hit save, and then it's gonna come back as a copy. This is gonna work for the majority of work. And the workflow for that generally is you're gonna do most of your adjustments inside of Lightroom first. So you're gonna do all the heavy lifting, you know, color balance, opening up and closing shadows, all that kind of stuff. And then you go to Photoshop for things like retouching, you know, where you might wanna use things like content aware fill, you might wanna use selections, you might wanna cut things out, create layered files, um, all those kind of things you're gonna do in Photoshop. Then when I hit save, I come back. So now we come to the second scenario. We have a photograph inside of Lightroom that's already been in Photoshop. What do we do with that? We have three options. Let's explore them right now. So the first option, the simplest option is, you know, here we are in Lightroom. I haven't made any adjustments to it and I can tell because if you look at this little tab here, see this means adjustments have been made. That's not there. Even though adjustments have been made, no adjustments have been made inside of Lightroom. So if that's the case, and I wanna open this in Photoshop, we're gonna right click, and now we're gonna choose Edit in Photoshop. Now you have three options. We're gonna use Edit Original. So if you've made adjustments inside of Lightroom after you've put the photo in, these top two are gonna be relevant. We'll explore those in a sec. But because we haven't, there's no badge there, we're just gonna edit original. Click edit, goes back into Photoshop and look at this. Lo and behold, all the layers are maintained. So when we go in and red edit the original, we get the original. In fact, I can double click here, I can go back into camera raw, I can make my adjustments in here. Let's make this more of a high contrast look. Click OK, it updates. Okay, so with these curves, they're sort of working, but let's reduce the opacity so we can still just have more of a subtle effect. And also this way we can also maintain our layers. Let me hit Control S or Command S. Now I can close it or, or not, it doesn't really matter. If I'm gonna continue working on it, I wouldn't close it, but I'm just gonna close it so we can see. And then if we go to Lightroom Classic, and then we see, oh, look at this, it's updated now. It's still the same image. No adjustments have been made in Lightroom yet, but it's been updated and it's still that TIFF. Okay, so now we're gonna go further, we're gonna make an adjustment inside of Lightroom. If we go to the develop module, and let's make this a warmer kind of tone once again, and go back to the library. And now if I right click and I choose to edit in Photoshop, I'm gonna click here, we're gonna edit in Photoshop. Let's edit original. Remember this has been warmed up, and notice that we don't have those adjustments. So that warmth is not gonna appear in here. It's still there inside of Lightroom, but it's just not gonna appear here. All right, so we wanna do some more work in here. Why don't we duplicate the background, bring it over the top here, and I'm just gonna apply a blur. So we're gonna choose Filter Blur. Just give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. Let's give it a kind of a soft focus kind of effect. Slide sandwich, okay. So we've done that, change it to overlay blending mode. Now I'm going quickly because it doesn't really matter what I do here, you're gonna do your own adjustments. But see how we're giving this a kind of a cool look here? And now if I hit Control S to save it, notice this is what it looks like, pay attention. Now we go back to Lightroom and look at that. It's updated, but it's got that Lightroom adjustment now comes back on it. So there's that Lightroom adjustment. If I double click here, we can undo it. So you can see that Lightroom adjustment is still there. But we didn't get to see it when we were inside of Photoshop. Okay, let's look at the other two options. Let's right click here, and we're gonna choose Edit in Photoshop. And this time we're gonna choose Edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. This way, the Lightroom adjustments are gonna come through into Photoshop, but there's a caveat. Let's check it out. Click Edit. And here we are in Photoshop. Notice it maintains the appearance that we created in Lightroom. It applied that Lightroom adjustment, and we can see it in Photoshop, but notice it flattened the image. So that's what that option does. So I'm not gonna save this. 
Let's go back to Lightroom. And because I didn't save it, we haven't flattened our image. Those layers are still there. If I had saved it, it would have been permanently, would have got rid of those layers. We don't want that to happen. So what would we do? Well, we right click here and then we choose to edit in Photoshop once again. And now we're going to edit a copy. Now, this is not going to apply the right Lightroom adjustments either inside of Photoshop. But what it's going to do is it's going to give us a copy. So let's choose edit. It's going to open here inside of Photoshop. Let me just hit Control S to save it. What if I want those adjustments? Well, let me go back to Lightroom. This is where it gets really good. So here we are in Lightroom. Notice now there's three versions of this. There's our original. There's the original copy that we've been playing around with. And now we've got a new copy. And you can see that there. See, it says Edit, Edit 2. So now it created an additional copy. If we go to the develop module, notice that that adjustment that we created is there. So how do we get that adjustment through to Photoshop? Let me show you right now. So what we need to do is we just simply go under the presets, create a preset. And we're going to call this Tesla test, just so we know what it is. And, I'm, and it's going to go into Photoshop Cafe group. Let's just click create. Now we've created a preset. Now watch this. Let's go to Photoshop. Here we are. Notice that that warm tone's not there. But if we double click to open this as a smart object inside of Photoshop, which is now in Camera Raw, if we go to our presets and we go down to the Photoshop Cafe presets, notice Tesla Test is now there. Yes, when you create a preset in Lightroom, it comes through to Camera Raw now and vice versa. So it shares it. So we're going to click to apply that. Click OK. And now it's going to update and notice it maintains the appearance. Now there was two smart objects here, but let me show you something. When even though that one had the smart filter, let me double click. Notice that that one also has that appearance. So when you have more than one smart object of the same raw file inside of Photoshop, they're linked. When you make the adjustment, that adjustment is going to apply to all of those raw files. All right. So here's the cool thing. All I need to do now is just hit control S to save it. Now we're going to go back to Lightroom. It's going to update it. Now notice it's got too much of the effect because it's now got that double effect on here. But here's the nice thing. All we need to do is right click, choose down to develop settings, and then just choose to reset. Notice those adjustments are gone and we have that image. So just to recap, the basics you need to know is if you're working on that original file, you're opening in Photoshop for the first time, always open it as a smart object. Once you hit save inside of Photoshop, it creates that copy. Then you're going to go in and you're going to use that copy from now on. When you go into Photoshop, you're going to open it in Photoshop either as the original or the other two options, depending on whether or not you want to maintain any Lightroom adjustments you've done afterwards. And if you do, I showed you a little hack or a little trick at the end there of how you can get those Lightroom adjustments perfectly inside of Photoshop. So I'm curious if you guys learned anything new, let me know in the comments underneath. Um, and also let me know, I know this was more of an in-depth, maybe even a bit more of an advanced tutorial. Um, let me know if you want more advanced tutorials. And also, of course, let me know if you want more uh, beginner tutorials. I'm happy to do both of those for you guys. And by the way, if you're new here, well, welcome. This is Photoshop Cafe. And uh, this is a wonderful family of people that love Photoshop. If you want to join us, hit that subscribe button and you'll get a new tutorial from me at least once a week. And we also have our live streams every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So join us for that too. So anyway, guys, uh, if you like this or got any value out of it, smash that like button. And um, what it does that actually helps us with the algorithm. It helps people discover Photoshop Cafe. Also tell your friends and share the video, uh, share it on social media. And until next time, guys, I'll see you at the cafe.